Okay, let's look at one other student project. This one is very nicely done and it is a little bit simpler in all of the dimension lines and in the, spa in the space planning. So when you look at this drawing, you can see that the basic openness of the space plan is now a lot more conducive to uh, circulating larger groups of people. And even here with the spacing between the wall here, it might be nice in a gallery to have the ability to uh, have two people walk side by side. So you need to keep certain dimensions. Like your doorway should be a minimum of 36 inches. Your bathrooms, uh, we'll get into this uh, in another time in another course, but bathrooms need to have a handicap or a disabled accessible situation. So if you want to research a handicap or a disabled bathroom on the internet, it'll give you the proper dimensions. This would not pass code because it's not uh, accessible. So if you do a bathroom, you should check the internet for uh, accessible size of restroom areas. Okay, it's very easy to do. Just go to your uh, search engine and look up accessible restroom bathroom designs. Okay, um, the other thing with clearance is remember the entrance in and out of a building. Now this is correct because this allows you to have your 50% ratio in and out. So you have your emergency exit, you have your way in, your way out. So that's correct. This allows for really good circulation. And again, if you want to look at uh, what is number J, J is a bar. And this bar area here services uh, I, which is the cafe area. So as far as our program information, we want to have a reception area. So each gallery should have a reception area. It should also have a small cafe component. It can be opened and easily circulated in. So you have a cafe uh, component and then you have your gallery. And lastly, if you want to have a little kitchen area or an office, you can have that and you can also have a restroom. So this whole component here will make up your gallery design. You can see that this is a, a little simpler configuration, a lot more open. I think what could be uh, make this a more interesting presentation is to actually show the artwork in the gallery, show indications of the artwork, whether it's sculpture or whether it's the painting. So when you get to your elevations, you can actually see a hypothetical gallery set up with its, uh, with its uh, show actually set up. Okay? Now using your circle template or your pocket template, you could use this to create your little directional arrows and labels. So remember, use this for a time-saving method and you use it as a combination with the circles and the squares to draw your uh, directional arrows. Okay? Use your pencils to create fine lines, medium lines, and heavy lines. So if you need to remember and, and recall the proper use of line weights, you can have your little warm-up exercise. You could use a little warm-up by just reminding yourself that pencil lines can be drawn fine, medium, and bold. So just remind yourself that every class should have taught you line quality. And if you have not had my class in the past, one of the things that you could do is you can just go ahead and do a little warm-up on your line quality. And again, using your standard pencil, you can start out by holding the pencil very gently, holding it properly against the equipment that always makes for good architectural drafting. And it allows you to uh, get a firm grip of the pencil without holding it too tight. And a sharp, clean pencil sharpener is very good and it allows you to dry your fine line, okay? When you draw your medium line, you're really just using your muscle memory to create a line that is a little bit heavier. And by meaning heavier, you're putting more pressure on it and you're giving you a medium line. When you want to go to a heavy line, you're applying more pressure 
and in some cases you're actually going over it a second time to make it uh, even more bold. So use your techniques, use your skills from your first DC1 class to uh, keep building on it. And remember that if you want a little professional tip, if you turn your pencil slightly as you're drawing it across your paper, it will keep the point a little bit sharper and it will wear evenly. So I give it a very slight turn as I'm going. Now I did that in slow motion. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to draw my lines to you in real time the way I do it. And that is you get your measurements using your scale and when you know that you have a starting point and an ending point, I place my pencil on the start point and I draw the line across with a little bit more vitality. By having your quickness and your deliberate use of the line, it will make it appear to be a more consistent and proper line weight. Okay? So remind yourself to use proper line quality in your drawing and you need to know the appropriate places to, to do dark lines. So let's go with the uh, heaviest lines first and then we'll work our way inward. So the heaviest lines are going to be the borders and I'm going to move over here to the title block. And so the heaviest lines are going to be the border and the title block. And this title block is where you're going to put your class information, you know, the student's name, the course, DC2, uh, the, the project, which is the gallery, If you'd like to put the course number, you can. If you'd like to put uh, the department within UCLA, you can do that. Or you could put, um, and the instructor's name. So you can fill in the title block with the date, the scale, the pertinent information for this project. So here's your heaviest lines in the border and title block. 